What are you made of? I don't mean organs and tissues, I mean atoms. What elements are you made of? Let's find out, shall we? I make a new science video every week, and if you enjoy these videos then please consider subscribing for more science content. Our bodies are wonders of bioengineering, being made from bones, muscles, skin and organs with litres of blood flowing through nearly a hundred thousand kilometres of blood vessels. But we need to analyse what all of these structures are made from. We need to look at the almost 40 trillion cells and figure out their components. In this video I'm going to run down the 21 most important elements in the human body. Okay, I didn't realise there were 21 of these when I started, but there are, so I'm going to do all of them. So just buckle in, I mean up, just get some buckles. I'm only going to be considering those that are actually needed for our continued survival. There are plenty of elements like gallium and tin which have somehow found their way into our bodies but don't seem to play a biological role. Our bodies contain a lot of just three types of chemical. These are carbohydrates, lipids or fats and proteins. Carbohydrates and lipids are made from just three chemical elements, those being carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. The other constituent, proteins, are also largely carbon, hydrogen and oxygen but also contain a fourth element, nitrogen. A couple of amino acids also contain sulfur, but more about that later. A whopping 65% of your mass is oxygen. That equates to nearly 49 kilograms of oxygen making up your body. I'm going to base this off an average person. Actually, men and women on average are slightly different in terms of their masses, so I'm going to go somewhere in the middle, and I'm going to assume 75 kilogram person, which actually is about what I weigh. Oxygen is an important gaseous element. In biology, it's useful because it tends to make things more reactive, and being more reactive is important to us because it helps the chemicals in our bodies to react more easily. Carbon in the body makes up 18% of your total mass. That's 13.5 kilograms of carbon. Carbon comes in a number of different forms in nature, from diamond to graphite to coal and charcoal. In the body, carbon is an important component of pretty much every single biological molecule. Even though 65% of all the atoms in your body are hydrogen, because hydrogen is a very light element, this only equates to 10% of your body mass. So 10% of you is hydrogen by mass, and this means you're about 7.5 kilograms of hydrogen. In its natural form, hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe and exists as a gas that combusts rapidly with oxygen and was so devastatingly responsible for the Hindenburg disaster. And finally in our top four we've got nitrogen. Even though proteins are everywhere, this accounts for just 3.2% of your mass, in other words 2.5 kilos of nitrogen. Again in its natural form nitrogen is a gaseous element that's incredibly unreactive. About 80% of our atmosphere is made from nitrogen. This means that all the other elements combined in your body account for just 3.8% of you. So let's dig a little deeper, shall we? Next on our list of elements comes calcium. Even though this is found in all your bones and is also very important in the nervous system, the total calcium in your body is just over a kilogram. That's 1.4%. In its pure form, calcium is a fairly reactive metal. In the body, about 99% of it exists as the mineral calcium hydroxyapatite, which forms the mineral sections of the bones, and this accounts for about half of all of your bones. Important in your cell membranes, DNA, and also a molecule called ATP, which is used by your body as an energy source, next on our list we find the element phosphorus. 1.1% of your body is phosphorus, or in other words, 825 grams of the stuff. In its natural form, phosphorus is a highly dangerous and reactive substance. Due to its high reactivity, it's actually never found just as phosphorus on Earth. It's always combined with other elements. And now we're getting on to chemicals that are very important, you couldn't live without them, but are only present in small quantities. And just as too little of them can be harmful, also too much of them can be harmful, sometimes even fatal. Next up on our list we have potassium. This in its natural form is a very reactive metal, but is needed to make your nervous system work. There's about 150 grams of this stuff in your body, or about 0.2%. Important in some amino acids and vitamins, next on our list we find sulphur. 
This is also about 0.2% of your body mass or another 150 grams. Also needed for your nervous system and next on our list comes a metal very similar to potassium and this is sodium. It accounts for about 0.15% of your body or about 110 grams. We find sodium mainly as common salt where it's bound to our next element, chlorine. And about the same amount of you is made from chlorine. Chlorine is responsible for a variety of things in the body. It helps your nervous system to work. It also helps to keep your body fluids at the correct concentration. In fact, people who suffer from cystic fibrosis are lacking a protein that moves chloride ions into and out of cells. The result of this is that they produce mucus that doesn't contain as much water as it should do and is therefore too thick. This mucus clogs the airways as well as other tubes within the body. 38 grams or 0.05% of you is made from magnesium. In the body this metal is used to regulate the activity of certain enzymes and helps that energy molecule that we mentioned before ATP to work. Magnesium is another metal that you might have seen as a strip and due to its lightness and strength alloys of magnesium are often used in Formula 1 car wheels. Good sources of nutritional magnesium are a lot of green veg such as broccoli, spinach, cabbage and kale. Also nuts and seeds are also good sources. Important in our blood, we have about 4.5 grams of iron in us. This metal is important in the functioning of haemoglobin. That's the protein that carries oxygen in your red blood cells from the lungs to tissues. It also carries carbon dioxide the other way back to your lungs so it can be excreted. That's about enough iron to make a 60mm or 2.5 inch nail. Some good dietary sources include red meat and offal such as liver, but also green veg, tofu, quinoa and legumes such as chickpeas. Next up and used in a huge variety of processes in our bodies, from the functioning of our immune systems to protein synthesis and cell division, we have zinc. We have about 2.5 grams of zinc in our bodies. Industrially, zinc is added to iron to prevent rusting, as well as it being used in the production of paints, dyes and cosmetics. Beef, cheese and sunflower seeds are all good dietary sources of zinc. The list doesn't end there by any means, and there are many, many, many more elements that are vital for the functioning of our body. These, however, now start to appear in smaller and smaller quantities. We have 0.075 grams or 75 milligrams of copper in our bodies. This is yet another metal found oxidised and green on the roofs of old buildings and forming much of the piping and wiring in our homes. Even though only required in very small quantities, this normally red coloured metal is important in the functioning of a variety of enzymes in our bodies. It's needed for proper tissue growth and development, and also for the formation of those red blood cells we talked about. It's also required for the metabolism of iron. Good sources of copper include our friend the leafy greens, but also nuts and seeds, and spirulina, which is made from a blue-green bacterium. Your body contains about 14 milligrams of selenium. This non-metal, similar to arsenic, is essential for a specific group of proteins. The function of these proteins varies from the regulation of metabolism to the production of sperm. Since selenium is found naturally in the soil, most food would appear to contain some selenium, but most people have no difficulty in obtaining the 55 micrograms needed each day. About 13 milligrams of our bodies consists of another metal called manganese. This is important in blood sugar regulation, the health of your skeleton and in blood clotting. In other uses manganese is added to steel to improve its strength for use in safes, gun barrels and railway tracks. Iodine is needed for the formation of thyroid hormones. These hormones are vastly important and regulate many aspects of our metabolism, including how quickly or slowly we utilise carbohydrates and fats for energy. They also affect how quickly we are able to make different proteins, and even affect the rate of bone growth. We have about 12 mg of iodine in our bodies. We have about 10 mg of a metal called molybdenum. This has a number of industrial uses, mainly in the production of alloys, and in the human body it's involved in the function of a number of important enzymes. We are 2.3 mg lithium. This is the lightest of the metals and industrial has a number of applications from lubricating grease to batteries. 
Biologically, lithium appears to be important again in a number of enzyme actions with a variety of roles. Vegetables appear to be a good source of dietary lithium. Lithium also has some uses as a drug for treating certain mental health disorders. Responsible for the shiny parts of cars, another element that we need in our diets is chromium. Good sources are shellfish and Brazil nuts, although most food seems to contain it in sufficient quantities for our needs. In the body, chromium has a number of functions including helping insulin to work properly. Our bodies have roughly 1.8 milligrams of chromium. Finally on our list we have cobalt. This is present in tiny quantities similar to that of chromium. This has a wide variety of uses in the body even though it's only there in tiny amounts. These include having a role in cell division and the functioning of our nervous system. Cobalt is also an integral part of vitamin B12. So that's the 21 most important elements in the human body. Where these elements come from, and by that I mean where were these elements actually formed, is a different question and the topic for a future video. But for now, thank you for watching.